Hey guys, Youngblood with you for another fleet composition video, this time taking the most liked suggestion from last time, and that was pirates! Yes, there was a lot of enthusiasm there. Now since there weren't really any specifics about what we're trying to do or with how many people, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we're trying to do some mid-space heists of good. And I'm just going to build out a few examples of options that I personally think would work really well. Now when you talk piracy, there's a few factors that you should consider when it comes to the overall effectiveness. First off, never pirate alone. You should be bringing the superior force every time because your larger numbers then become a deterrent to fighting back. Not to mention, you almost always are going to need somebody to board another ship. Additionally, you don't necessarily need a ship capable of carrying cargo, but it certainly helps unless you plan on stealing the enemy's ship as well. And finally, you're going to need disablement equipment. Destroying an enemy ship may still spill out some of the cargo crates for you, but if you end up detonating a reactor or something catastrophic, you're going to end up losing out on most of the goods on board the ship, and then you wasted a bunch of cost and effort. So for these scenarios, let's say we've got six people that are interested in stealing cargo. So first off, in our first example, the new Cutlass is obviously bigger, um, feature sliding doors on the side like a helicopter, has more weaponry and a turret gunner position, plus if the current Cutlass is any indicator, it should be nice and durable. Now I think it's going to be my centerpiece for this operation, and I'm going to put four people in total in this ship because this is a situation where a boarding party is going to be necessary. You're going to have a pilot, a turret gunner, and two outlaw marines, uh, marines on standby. The other two ships need to be fast and capable of disabling an enemy ship, or at least keeping it in place. Now what you end up bringing can be kind of your prerogative, but if we're assuming we're talking about a cargo ship with one or two escorts, I'm bringing an Avenger Warlock, and I'll talk about tactics in just a second. The sixth person in this fleet is going to be in a fast and powerful ship, and for this example, I'm bringing a buccaneer for the final option, um, equipped with some sucker punches, long swords, and something big up top. So to start off this engagement, I'm sending the warlock in, basically to jump in, pop the EMP while your other two ships are hanging back uh, so they're not being impacted by the EMP blast. Ideally, what this is going to do is it's going to start to knock down their shields, and it's going to buy you a little bit of time to start engaging while that buccaneer takes advantage of its speed to get into the fight. Now the first priority then is going to be to deal with the fighters, and the Avenger also comes along with the Gatling nose gun that should do some pretty nice damage now that the shields are going to be impacted by that EMP, as well as your choice on the wings. Now I'm thinking as far as the wing weapons on the, on the Warlock, the stock soccer punches are still a pretty good idea because you can continue to throw distortion at the enemy to help keep them disabled, and if that cargo ship gets operational you know, while you're dealing with those fighters, you could then break off and try and knock out some of its power too. You then have the Avenger and the Buccaneer dealing with the fighters, and the Cutlass moves in on the cargo vessel if it's not needed to help out with those fighters as well. And remember, the goal here is for the cargo ship is to not destroy it, so your best bet is to have the Cutlass focus its fire on the engines to try and destroy those, while leaving the rest of the ship mostly in one piece for the time being. Now once the Avenger and the Buccaneer have dealt with the fighters, um, which you do end up killing, you then move on to a bigger cargo ship with the intention of keeping it disabled with distortion until you end up getting either compliance from the crew or until you know it's no longer mobile. Now if they're uncooperative, it's boarding party time. If they are cooperating, you still need to send a party in to go lock down the situation and start unloading the cargo. The Cutlass is going to pick the best airlock that's least likely to have defenses set up or maybe personnel ready to fight, slides alongside it, opens up the side doors, and the two outlaw marines and the turret gunner get moving. Um, if you can end up doing a scan and tell there's more people on board, um, you can leave the Cutlass unoccupied if you want to and take four people inside the ship to either deal with a bigger threat or to maybe unload cargo a little bit faster. But honestly, since you've already messed up the engines on the cargo ship, you do need that to escape. You know, you need the Cutlass to escape. So if it helps, you may be, like if that help ends up coming, you may be in trouble. Now another fleet option to consider with six people would be to start with one Redeemer that has three people on board, being a pilot and two gunners. The Redeemer isn't going to carry anywhere near the cargo that the Cutlass will, but it's about the most overgunned ship in the game, and if you want a deterrent to fighting back, or just a ship that's actually capable of dealing an unreal amount of damage, the Redeemer may be your best bet. Now with three other people available, I would consider having a Herald with one person as an interesting option. The ship may be able to jam signals so they can't request help. Um, it's got missile options so you could potentially launch a data spike missiles um, that are capable of forcing the sh target ships to drop their shields. Um, it's very, very fast in a straight line, and it can actually kind of hold its own with three size three hard points. Um, you know, the one considering factor there is, though, it doesn't necessarily maneuver all that well, so it's not a good fighter, um, and it doesn't really hold up to damage all that well. 
Past that, you've got two more people, so you could focus on more ships, bringing two sabers along. But if you went that route and you're really after cargo, then you don't have much there that's going to carry any cargo. So you're looking at stealing the ship as your only real option. I think a better bet would be a Redeemer with three, a Herald with one, a Super Hornet capable of dealing a ton of damage while acting as more of the traditional fighter in that convoy, and finally, a Freelancer with a pilot. Now, you could either go with the Max for more cargo carrying ability or a Mist to bring along even more firepower, even though you do sacrifice a little bit of cargo space. Now, in an example where you're going after a bigger target, like a whole C, um, or something along that size, cargo space becomes a real priority because you have to steal so much of that cargo. Now, you can leave some behind if you want to, but you want to maximize your efforts, right? Um, so this is why, in this situation, we're going to opt to bring the Caterpillar along. Not only does the Caterpillar come with lots of cargo room, but it's also conveniently has these side opening doors for quickly loading the cargo and getting out before rescue comes. The Cat can be operational pretty well with three people. Um, two in turrets and a pilot, um, and even if it's not at full effectiveness, you may end up being able to get some different modules that are going to help you in that area. Now, if we increase, um, well, you know what, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, too. Um, as you're trying to unload cargo and get it into your Caterpillar, the other benefit to that ship there is really going to be the fact that it's got the... Uh, the tractor beam and that whole operating station there so if the threats are gone you can easily pull somebody out of a turret and end up putting them into the tractor control to really speed up your overall loading of the goods so moving past that if we assume that the concept art for the whole C um, and this is the situation we're using is being escorted by two fighters um, then you need to be prepared to deal with that threat but also need to find a way to help keep the whole C from fleeing now if the interdiction device that's meant to be piloted on the buccaneer ends up coming to fruition Bringing one buck along with that device could help to keep the hole in place while you fight. Now that leaves you with two other people available, and I'm opting for sabers here to make quick work of the escorts while still being fast enough to deal with lighter fighters, um, to catch up to the hole if needed, uh, and stealthy enough to probably sneak up on them and actually start the attack. Now once the fighters are done, it's time to move on to the cargo. Now another option when talking about the whole series is that they're almost like pinatas when it comes to cargo. You know, you could end up jumping in with a caterpillar with three people, two gladiators, and either a saber or a super hornet. The reason I say gladiators is that they're capable of fighting in a traditional dogfight, even though they're a bit outclassed. Um, but you could probably launch a volley of torpedoes at the whole series, then move on to fighting, hope that you disable the whole series, allowing your whole fleet to engage the fighters before returning to the hole. The positive there, if things go wrong with your torps, even if you destroy the ship, you should still be able to access a lot of that cargo that's now floating around in space. Now these situations take on a whole different perspective if we're talking about stealing a ship with everything on board um, because you're going to end up needing to get on board of that craft, neutralize all the threats, uh, and the ship needs to stay operational through all of that. So no matter how you intend to do it, you need an EWAR presence there. Um, you know, I'd probably look at Warlocks or Sentinels or Heralds utilizing EMPs, Data Spikes, Jammers, or really whatever options end up being present in the game to keep that ship in place without doing too much damage to her. Remember, you have to fly that ship home. <laughs> so from there, it's really about getting the boarding party ready. And I really think in most situations, if escorts are present, you're probably looking at a minimum of eight people to pull this off. With five people being in a cutlass or something similar, all ready to board, three um, E-War and fighter capable options, dealing with escorts and really focusing on disablement. So at the end of the day, when it comes to piracy, there's just so many options out there. You know, in an example, you could maybe swap out the Buccaneer for a Glaive if you want to be a little bit more exotic. You know, so there's a lot that you can do, and there weren't really a lot of specifics given in this example. So I figured I would just hit on a few of them and try and give you guys some ideas. So if you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, please keep the suggestions coming, and the next one will be the most liked one from this video. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and take care.